Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to talk to you about graphing lines by intercepts in this video. A lot of times people start graphing lines using the slope intercept form first, y equals mx plus b, and that's a fine way to do it. Oftentimes in a math for business class or finite math class, um, we do a lot of graphing by intercepts. It's quicker for us to do when we're graphing lots of equations. So we're going to talk you through how to do that here. Now remember that an intercept in our xy plane here is going to be when the other variable is equal to zero. We'll be on an axis and that means the other variable will be equal zero. So when we're on the x-axis that means y is equal to zero and when we're on the y-axis that means x is equal to zero. So if I want to find the x-intercept then I'm going to set y equal to zero and I can find my x-intercept. If I want to find the y-intercept then that means I will set x equal to zero and I'll be able to find that intercept. Okay, so if I look at my first example here, 2x minus 4y equals 12, and I want to find the x-intercept, that means y is 0. So think about what happens if we plug in 0 for y into this term. This term would be negative 4 times 0, which is 0, of course, right? So plugging in 0 for one of the variables is going to make that term 0. So this term really isn't there if we plug in y equals 0. We just get 2x equals 12, and you probably can even see what the answer to that is just by looking at it, or if not, you can divide both sides by 2, and you'll see that x is 6, right? So if x is 6 and y is 0, then that, of course, is the point 6 comma 0. And for our y-intercept, let's do a similar thing. So plugging in x equals 0 would make this 2x term be 0. Now we would still have the negative, so think negative 4y equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 4, and you'll get that y is equal to negative 3. So our y-intercept, actually the coordinates are 0, negative 3, right? So if we plot these two points, then we'll have two points that'll help us graph our lines. So at 6 on the x-axis would be here. Negative 3 on the y-axis would be down here. Now remember, once we have two points plotted, we should be able to just draw our line through them, drawing a straight line. You'll need some sort of, you know, to make it neat, have some sort of a short ruler or something similar handy where you can sketch this nicely. Um, and go ahead and make sure you draw it all the way across your grid. Don't just use a little piece of line, but actually extend it all the way out to the edges of the graph. Okay, so there is our graph of 2x minus 4y equals 12 using intercepts. Let's look at our next example, negative 3x plus 8y equals 24. We'll do a similar thing here. So our x-intercept, which will be when y is equal to 0, and if y is equal to 0, then that means this plus 8y would not really be there. So we'd have negative 3x equals 24. Divide by negative 3 on both sides, and we'll see that x is negative 8. And then let's find our y-intercept y-intercept is going to be when x is 0. And if x is 0, that means this negative 3x term really goes away and becomes nothing. So we get 8y equals 24. Dividing by 8 then on both sides will give us that y equals 3. So if here x is negative 8 and y is 0, then this is actually negative 8, 0. And if we need to write this one in terms of a point, we can say 0, comma 3. But if we go over to negative 8 on our x-axis, then we'll be way over here to the left. And if we go up 3, positive 3 on our y-axis, then we'll be here. And once we have our two, and remember when we have our two points plotted, we can go ahead and just draw a straight line through those points to give us our graph for the line. So there's our graph of negative 3x plus 8y equals 24. If you are watching this video from a business math or a finite math perspective, sometimes you are given a grid that is just the first quadrant, so we're going to do two of those as well. So an example of just graphing in the first quadrant, we have 3x plus 5y equals 30. We'll do our intercepts the same way though, so if we have an x-intercept, want to know that. Remember that's when y equals 0. So if y is 0, this term is nothing, and we have 3x equals 30, so dividing both sides by 3, that will give us that x is equal to 10. So we'll have 10 comma 0. And then let's do our y-intercept as well. So y-intercept is when x is 0. And if y is 0, then this term becomes nothing, and we just get 5y equals 30. Dividing by 5 on both sides gives you y equals 6. So you'll have a y-intercept of 0, 6 here. 
plotting these 10 comma 0 at positive 10 on the x-axis so just on our horizontal axis here which is along the bottom if we're only using the first quadrant and then on the left side of our graph if we're just using the first quadrant will be our y-axis so at 6 0 comma 6 would be up 6 from the zero point here from the origin and now we can simply plot our line through these points and that is our graph of 3x plus 5y equals 30. Let's do another one of these in the first quadrant. So here we'll have 4x plus 3y equals 36. So again, x-intercept, y being 0. Just be careful that you're not setting the wrong thing equal to 0, right? x-intercept, the other term, is going to become 0 and 0 out. 4x equals 36. Dividing by 4, you'll get that x is 9. So that will be a point 9 comma 0 and then for our y-intercept that's going to be when the other variable x is 0 so our y-intercept making the x term 0 out 3y equals 36 dividing by 3 on both sides will give us that y is equal to 12 and if x is 0 and y is 12 then that's 0 comma 12 so on the x-axis horizontal axis over 9 and plot our point and on the y-axis up 12 and plot our point and connect our points with a straight line and that is our graph of 4x plus 3y equals 36. Okay hopefully you have a good idea of how to zero out one of the terms, plot those intercepts, and then use those intercepts to graph a line. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.